We're going to learn to draw the second of the tea light holder examples. This one has an X profile, a series of holes in, a little bit of material removed at the top and at the bottom, and then the two planes are identical apart from the position of the lap joint that we'll learn a little more about later. So first of all, let's just get a feel for it. Roughly speaking, this is square, and it's about the width of one and a half of, of the tea light holders. So into fusion, the first thing we need to do is bring in the tea light holder we've drawn previously. So I've already saved this file, if not it's going to ask you to save, so I'll drag that in. It might just take a second to arrive. There we are. So that's just thinking that through now. Beautiful. So I'm happy with the position for now. I want to zoom out so I can really see what's going on. Okay, I have my origin switch on. If you can't see your origins, it's just simply this light bulb there. I want to draw on this surface. If you're too zoomed in, you won't be able to get to it. So either you zoom out or you simply switch off the object so you can see your origin. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. This surface wants to do a new sketch on this surface. Okay, <clears throat> now, very importantly, for reasons we'll understand fully later, I want the centre rectangle. So it's very important you get that central point there. And we draw out. So remember, it's about one and a half T, uh, T lights width. So that's showing at just about 60 was looking like a good width. So I'm just going to enter that manually 60 by 60. There we have the first plane. But at the minute, that has no thickness to it. So we need to to give it some thickness to this material. So as you've done many times before, you select it, press Q, or modify, press pull. If we look from the top, we can see that we're working in the middle, but the minute it's wanting to add thickness just to one side, so we need to change that from one-sided to symmetrical. That's very important. The material is three millimeters thick, so we need to add 1.5 each side. So 1.5, 1.5, total of three. So now we've got the beginnings of our candle holder, three mil piece of material. The trouble is this tea light is in the wrong place in a minute, so we need to move it up a little bit. So we go to bodies and initially switch off body one, which is what we've just drawn. So now we can move the tea light holder. So I want you to select everything, then right click them and choose move copy. We want to get components, and we just have to reselect that again. So now we can move all of that. We don't know where we're moving it to. So we go back to body, go from the front, and we simply click the up arrow, and we move it all up until it lines up with the top of the, the candle holder. Perfect. So now I need to modify the shape of this. So if we go back and look at what we're aiming for, the first thing is just a little cut out here for the T lines. To fusion. Let's do a new sketch on this surface. Try again, new sketch on this surface, capture position. Then I do sketch, line, and I simply draw where I want to cut out from. So let's make it nice and simple. Okay, then once I've done that, stop sketch, look at it in 3D, I select this area, and then I simply do press pull. I cut out that bit of material, so it's beautifully cut that out the way. What's our next step? Next step is to draw this bottom cut out, so repeat that. Sketch, create sketch. line you notice I'm just carefully drawing to the squares it makes life easier and more accurate so stop sketch modify press pull so what's left to do There's a couple of things these circles are like the repeating pattern of the circles so we go back to Fusion, and again I select this sketch, surface to sketch on, 
And what I'm going to do is just simply come and get a centre point circle, centre diameter circle, sorry, and draw one of the larger ones. So let's call that six. Click enter twice. And then go back to sketch, and here's a whole new tool. Fantastic tool, rectangular pattern. So what object do I want to pattern? I want to pattern a circle. How many do I want? I want four. And I want them in this direction. So simply by doing this, it's going to ensure I've got four identical circles there. I repeat above. Circle. Centre point. And this time I'm going to draw, start at the same position, a five. And then again repeat rectangular pattern. What object? This object. Which direction? This direction. How many? Four. And then pull them out. So the centers are in the same places. One more to go. So sketch. Circle. Center diameter. Four this time. Sketch, rectangular pattern, select the object, how many? Four. Pull out, so the centers line up, four. Now I stop sketch. I'm just going to turn the T light off. And now all I need to do is press Q or modify press pull. And then select what I'd like to press pull, which is all the circles. So we're simply pressing shift on each of the circles. I get all the circles. And then pull through. Now I've got all the holes in my circles. Now we're very nearly done, apart from that we need two of these and they need to be to join together with a lap joint. Now that means that on this one, a little bit of material has been removed here on this plane, and on this plane, a little bit of material has been removed here, so they join together. So I'll show you how that's done now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have two of these. So I'm going to come over and just simply right-click on body one, and I'm going to click Copy, go back in again, and Paste. And now with the second one, it's wanting to move it. Well, I don't want to move it. I want it in the original place. I'll just cancel it out. And I've got body one and body two. They're actually in exactly the same place. So I've got them both turned off. There's body one. There's body two. And that will become clear why we've done that later. So, I'm now going to do a new sketch on this surface. I'm going to come to the rect rectangle center point. And do you remember before we, we went from the center point? This is why it's important. If we go from the center again, we draw up all the way and we come across by three because three is the thickness of the material. So that's perfect. Three drawn across like that. The height doesn't really matter. Three, the width is the important thing. Now I'm going to get a sketch. I'm going to put a line in and this must be at the halfway point and go across all the way like that. Okay. Again, the, the reasons for that will become clear later. In fact, clear now. The way that I can select this part and this part separately. So I'm going to turn off body two, so I'm only seeing body one. Now I'm going to choose this upper area here. Modify, press pull, and cut across like that. So this area has been removed. Now I need to repeat uh, for the other component, body two, I need to do it in reverse. So I need to remove this lower section. So let's look again at body one. Body one has this removed. In body two, we need to remove this part. So turn off body one, turn on body two. Now the sketch has switched off. So let's come down here, switch that sketch back on. And it was the lower part we need to remove. So we just select here. Put Q and we press pull it. So now let's have a look again at our bodies. 
switch off that sketch. So body one has a slot here. Body two has a slot here. And that's been achieved because we've been working from the same central point. So now I'm going to switch body one back on. And I'm going to tell uh, switch body one off for a second. I'm just going to tell the computer I'd like to move body two. So I come off the side, I right click, move copy, and I select the body two. not free move, rotate. So I select the body that I want to rotate and then I have to set the axis what I want it to rotate around. So I switch on my origins. What I want to rotate around is that beautiful line there. And then as we start to rotate, if I switch body one back on, you can see how I'm rotating body two around body one. So when I get to 90 degrees, switch off my origins. I'm now at the point where I've got the complete candle holder. I'm just going to do one more little trick to make it even clearer what we're doing. I'm going to move body two. Move body two free move. And I'm going to move it upwards. So you can just see what's happening. I'll zoom out a little bit. So moving up as you can see how the slots, the two slots, now fit together to make a complete handle, candle holder. And that's it. That's all you need to know for making this candle.